Welcome to Spine Academy. In this video, we're going to review myelography of the cervical spine. This is an excerpt from a broader course on cervical spine imaging. If you're interested in seeing the full course, we've left a link in the description. So it's very common these days for people to have things like pacemakers in place or spinal cord stimulators or some reason that they can't get an MRI scan. And as I said earlier in this chapter, an MRI scan is really the gold standard. If you had to pick only one study, that might be the one to get. But people that have implants like that, that prohibit them from getting an MRI, or sometimes people are like machinists and might have metal in their body or bullet fragments or things like that, all of those would preclude people from getting an MRI. And in those situations, we get a study called a myelogram. Now, a myelogram has been around for a really long time. It predates MRI, and before MRI really became popular, it's how imaging was done. I wanted to commit a small section of this uh, chapter to myelography just for those people that need to, to understand it. So myelography is a procedure that is done typically with a CAT scan. It does require the placement of contrast material into the CSF itself. So the way that that's done, this animation shows really nicely, uh, is that people will have a spinal tap or a lumbar puncture performed. And that's usually done by the radiologist and it usually takes about 15 minutes. It's done with x-ray guidance and they put a needle in through the skin. So it's like a small needle stick, goes through the skin, between the spinous processes and into the spinal canal in what, into what's called the thecal sac, and that's where the spinal fluid itself is. They will inject some contrast material that goes into that. And the contrast will kind of distribute itself into the CSF and allow them to get images. It used to be that they got just x-rays, and now they will still get x-rays, but frequently we will get, after getting contrast into it, get a post-myelogram CT scan, or what some people would just call CT myelogram. So a CT myelogram will give you pictures that look like this. So you'll get an image that's not only a sagittal sequence, but also potentially an axial sequence. Now, when I get a myelogram on a patient, once they get the spinal tap and they get the fluid in there, I think we get the whole thing. I usually will get a cervical, thoracic, and lumbar, because once it's in there, you may as well get imaging through the whole thing, just to spare people having to get that spinal tap repeatedly. But you'll get an image that looks a lot like this. So it looks just like a CAT scan, because it is a CAT scan. We're looking at the bony anatomy right here, but the difference here is that you can see this white fluid. Now this is contrast material and it is in the CSF or the spinal fluid which surrounds the spinal cord. So you can kind of see the silhouette of the spinal cord here, the outline of the spinal cord within the spinal canal. So that's a big difference between this study and the CT scan without the contrast within it. Yeah, when you get a single slice, like let's say you're looking at a slice through here, through the C4-5 level, that will give you a picture that looks like this. So on this picture, you can see again, the C4 vertebral body, a little bit of the disc space there, some lot of masses, but here you can see contrast within the, the canal, surrounding the spinal cord, and you can even see small root fibers. So just by comparison, if you were to pull up an MRI scan through the same, same level, you could see kind of a comparison between a CAT scan myelogram, or a CT myelogram axial image, and an MRI axial image. Both of them show you the outline of the spinal cord, the CSF space itself. You can even see the little rootlets. Here you can't see much. Here you can see the frame in itself and some of the structures surrounding the spine. The contrast does not get into that space. It stays very much limited to the thecal sac or the space surrounding the spinal cord. So you kind of lose the ability to resolve what's happening further out here. But a CT myelogram is a very valuable study to look at what's happening to the spinal cord and to look at what's happening to the spinal nerves when an MRI is not an option. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future content, we'd welcome them in the comment section below.